Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today on my good friend Laura, I created a look that is perfect for any girl or boy watching who wants to learn how to create something full glam and glittery and sparkly and dramatic for the upcoming New Year's Eve celebration. So without further ado, if you want to learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream to get Laura's skin really plumped and hydrated before we use all this makeup. I've used this cream before for I don't even know how long now, but every time it leaves the skin so hydrated, it makes everything blend seamlessly on top of it. Next up, I'm just taking some tweezers and cleaning up her eyebrows a bit. Nothing too intense, just removing any of those stray hairs. You can even use a face razor blade for this if you'd like, but this is the direction I'm taking today. And once I've done this, I'm heading over to the one and only, the plexiglass illuminator that I created in collaboration with my beauty brand, applying the smallest amount to the back of my hand before applying this to the areas of the face where I wanna see that glass-like glow from. You're gonna see here in just a second. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how beautiful is that? Now, honestly, we're not gonna see much of this glow by the time we go in with a full coverage foundation and powders on top of it. So I'll use it again at the end on top of the complexion products to add back the glow. But I wanted to show you how I would incorporate this into a full glam look. I'm using it more so as a skincare product right Right now to get the skin well prepped and then we'll head back to this later once again. Until then I'm using the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancer Concealer in the shade SX16 and using this to contour our model's face. I'm using a different technique than I usually do today. I'm under painting the contours and the highlights before adding in a foundation on top to blend it in. So this is going to look you know <laughs> a little crazy at first but have faith right now i'm adding in the contours and shadows to areas of the face like the hollows of her cheekbones the jawline the forehead the nose and so on a lot of different makeup artists use this technique in fact i used to use it all of the time back in the day until i started using just you know a different technique that worked better and quicker for me. And this is a full glam, full coverage look today. So I, I'm gonna be pretty dramatic in these steps, but of course you can go more subtle if you like. Next up, I'm using the same Kevin Aquan concealer, but this time in the shade SX04 and using this to add in the highlights to the face. So I'm applying it to the under eye area, the chin, the corners of the mouth, the center of the forehead and down the bridge of the nose. This highlight shade has a yellow undertone in it still. And the contour shade I used is quite a bit deep and saturated with those orange undertones because I still want it to read warm once I apply on the foundation later on. Sometimes if it's not warm enough, it can read a little ashy once you apply the foundation on top or it just gets lost in translation and it doesn't pick up at all but there really is more of a science to this and by by this i mean the underpainting technique i can do a whole other tutorial on it if you like and i can go really in depth about it just let me know down in the comments but for right now you kind of get the idea we've added in the shadows and the highlights and now i'm going to use this shiseido sinker skin radiant lifting foundation in the shade 350 maple to apply on top and blend everything in. This is where the magic happens and you get to see everything come together and look a little softer. I'm going to speed this up a little bit so we're not sitting here all day but I'm keeping most of the blending footage in so you can see the process. In my opinion I do think this technique takes a a little more work and sometimes a little more product but the end result does look really beautiful it looks especially stunning in flash photography so i'm going to finish up this blend real quick and then we'll move on to the next step Alrighty, so next up, I'm using the One Size Translucent Setting Powder to set the concealer around the eyes. For an area such as this, I do like using a powder puff to really press the powder in. Especially for a flawless result, my trick is to set it first with the powder, and once everything is set and mattified, then I go in with the baking technique, which you'll see me do in just a minute. But for right now, I'm just using the setting powder around the eyes where we had used that lighter concealer to highlight, and for around the face, I'm going to use a powder 
foundation to set everything else. The powder foundation I'm using today is the one size turn up the base powder foundation in the shade medium 5G and using this to set the remaining products into place. I chose not to use the translucent powder for this because I wanted something that had, um, you know, a pigment in it to give the skin a little color. I wanted to bronze it up just slightly because I'll be baking with the setting powder, which will in return lighten up the skin tone. So I'm just foreshadowing here a bit to make sure everything looks even and matches up by the end of this tutorial. So here is what I was talking about when I mentioned baking. I'm taking a hefty amount of that setting powder and laying it down in the areas we had highlighted earlier with the concealer. So the under eyes, the corners of the mouth, the center of the forehead, and down the bridge of the nose. This is really going to reinforce those highlights and make them appear even brighter while also locking in that makeup to last all night. Besides the fact that Laura loves a full dramatic glam, this is the time to have fun and experience with with going heavier with your makeup if it's something you've been wanting to do it's new year's eve try out a different look or technique and i can assure you not only will this look beautiful in photos and in person but it'll last you all night like this makeup right here may even <laughs> may even last laura to the year of 2025 it ain't going anywhere that i can assure you all right, next I'm using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Definer in the shade Ebony to start filling in and shaping her brows. What's nice about this brow product is that it's really quick and easy to use. If you need something with a bit more precision, I'd recommend their Brow Wiz, but this works perfectly for what I'm looking to do, which is add depth and shape to her brows without overdoing it. And I like the shade I'm using here because it matches the color and undertone of her hair. So while it might look a little intense at first, once the hair is styled and down, framing her face, it matches up perfectly. To begin on the eyes, I'm using the One Size Black Gel Eyeliner Pencil and running this through the waterline. Now, I'm going to tell you, while filming this, I had no idea what eye look I was going to create. I knew I just wanted something dramatic and glittery, so... It's gonna be about building and adding until we get the shape and look we like. So once I had the eyeliner ran through the waterline and winged out a bit, I'm just gonna budge and smudge that out with some black eyeshadow. The black eyeshadow I'm using here is for MAC and I think, I think it's called Carbon, but really you can use any black eyeshadow that you already have. And then also taking this through the upper crease. Honestly, it may just be easier for you to apply this onto the lid and just blend it out. I didn't know at the time, you know, I was doing this, but I'm going to apply a glitter on top. So this doesn't have to be all that precise. I thought I was going to create one eye look, but decided to go another direction. So I'm going to leave this here and come back to it after I apply the glitter, which is this Lemonhead LA Glitter Paste in the shade Groupie. And I'm sweet sweeping this across the complete upper lid. And I'll even add a bit to the center of the lower eyelid. This stuff is so beautiful. I think I've used this shade before actually, now that I think about it. Their glitter pastes are stunning and easy to use. You don't even have to add glitter glue to it or anything. It just sticks right on and lasts all night. But you can kind of see here what I, what I was talking about earlier. Had I known I'd be adding the glitter paste, I would have just applied the black eyeshadow everywhere and smoked it out, but because I didn't, I'm just adding to it to build up that drama and shape. And if I'm gonna be really honest here, if you're gonna add glitter, blending out your matte eyeshadows beforehand is the best way to go because I'm, I'm kind of, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of cringing right now looking at the blend here. Well, I guess it's not that bad. No, it, it is struggling a bit, but the point is, learn from my mistakes. Blending out the matte black shadow first will give a cleaner, more diffused blend. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna complete the other eye off camera and then add some lashes and then head back to the complexion by sweeping that powder right off. I meant to mention it earlier, but what's nice about having that powder sit there while doing the eye makeup is that it'll catch any fallout that you may have from the shadows and glitter. So you won't have to worry about ruining your complexion while doing your eye makeup. To add some color to the cheeks, I'm using this House Labs blush in the shade Amarone and building this color up. I love the blushes they came out with in the Italian Glam Casa Gaga collection. I love the whole collection. In fact, I'll even go as far to say that I think this is 
one of the best collections that came out in all of 2021. The packaging is beautiful. The formulas are incredible. Everything was just really, really well done. And once I have this applied on, I'm starting out on the lips by using this Morphe Lip Crayon in the shade TFW and using this not only as a lip liner, but also as an all over lip color. This is the first time I'm using their lip crayons and they're really nice. I wanna keep the lips simple to achieve because then it's just easy to maintain throughout the evening. I'm using only two products, this one and then the About Face Light Lock Lip Gloss in the shade Double Clutch to apply right on top for a gloss finish. This gloss has a peachy nude color pigment to it, so it's all you really need to bring out with you to touch up your lips. And I promised earlier I'd show you how I use the plexiglass illuminator to add glow back to the skin, so I'm going to do so by first adding it to the back of my hand. I shear it out a bit like so, press a makeup sponge into it, and then lightly press it onto her cheekbones. You saw how matte it was before, and now it's going to have this soft glow finish that doesn't look glittery or overdone. It just gives an expensive finish to the skin that looks incredible. It doesn't interfere or, or break down the makeup products underneath it. It completely dries down after a few seconds and will last all night, which makes this the final step and how I created this full glam New Year's Eve makeup look on my naturally beautiful friend. There we have it kids, I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.